Hello everyone! Uh, I mentioned in my few previous videos that I might briefly interrupt the Bobby Fischer series to check up on Leela Chess Zero, so here it is, I'm briefly interrupting it. Uh, last time we checked up on Leela Chess Zero, uh, she was rated around 3000 during her match with Grandmaster Andrew Tang. Uh, here she faces uh, a chess engine called Nirvana, some t uh, 3100 uh, rated, or something less, 3098 I believe is the... Uh, is the exact rating. Uh, I found uh, an interesting game on a chess.com article. Uh, it's been played in the C Computer Chess Championship. Uh, as usual, the top engines, uh, Stockfish, Komodo, and uh, uh, Stockfish, <laughs> Komodo, and Houdini are battling it out uh, who will be the top engine. But here we have uh, Lila seems to be catching up to the to the top engines, and uh, this is one of the nicer games that was played uh, during this championship. Uh, you will find a link uh, with some more information about this whole uh, Lila Zero thing in the description below. Also, the link to the Computer Chess Championship uh, will be in the description where you can check up some more games if you're interested uh, in, in top engine games. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, Lila has the white pieces and uh, we have D4 on the board. Uh, knight to f6, c4, we have e6, knight to f3, the anti nimzo and as in most of the human games, uh, the game transposes into the queen's gambit declined. Uh, knight to c3, bishop to b4, the Ragozin defense, and now bishop to g5, uh, pinning the knight, controlling the center. Uh, we have knight bd7, and here e3. c5, uh, we have c captures on d5, e captures on d5, uh, you can see that uh, unlike Petrosian, Lila doesn't have uh, doesn't have a problem with uh, <laughs> uh, relieving the tension in the center. Uh, e captures on d5 and queen to c2. Uh, queen to a5 here, bishop to d3, and now a move that uh, when you're playing with the black pieces, you will always want to play this move when you see bishop to d3. Uh, d3 is a very active square for the bishop, and here uh, I, I, I myself never play a move like this. C4 was played. It seems like a very nice move. Uh, you force the bishop away from this very strong square. Uh, but here it doesn't really achieve all that much. I'm sure, I mean, uh, a 3100 uh, engine played it. So it's it's not a bad move. I, I just... Um, I just don't think a, a human would uh, would ever play a move like this. But okay. Uh, bishop to f5. We have castles, castles, and now g6. Uh, asking Lila, what do you want to do with this bishop? Uh, do you want to bring it back to h3 or do you want to capture on d7? So, uh, when uh, presented with an option like this, whether to retreat on h3 or capture on d7, uh, what do you get? Uh, usually you don't want to capture anything if you don't gain anything by it. So, it seems like by capturing on d7 you will only improve the position uh, of black's light square bishop, develop it and connect black's rooks. So, let's see what happens if you play bishop to h3. Here you can get bishop captures, b captures on c3, and here knight to e4. Simply, this comes with a double attack against the c3 pawn. Also, now your bishop on g5 is threatened. Uh, white would have to react uh, to this attack of the pawn. Rook a to c1, knight captures on g5, knight captures, and here queen would go back to d8. Uh, with a nice tempo on this knight on g5, and black seems to be perfectly fine here. Also now, this doesn't seem like uh, all that bad of a structure. Now the c3 pawn seems, uh, seems rather funny looking. So, after g6, Lila decides to, instead of, uh, of going into the variation we've just seen, to go bishop captures on d7. And okay, knight captures on d7 and now comes e4. Uh, an excellent move where, if you play something like uh, pawn captures and knight captures, uh, you've just uh, improved the position of white's knight. There are all these dark square weaknesses, the knight can come to f6. And it would not be a pleasant position to play for black. On the other hand, if you think, uh, oh, e4, it seems like white just blundered a pawn. For example, bishop captures on c3, b captures, and here simply capturing on d4. Uh, queen captures, and here queen captures on c3, it seems like you've grabbed a pawn and all is well. Uh, but uh, not, not so much. Uh, for example, queen to e7, and it's uh, not all that clear how black can start developing his pieces. Uh, the knight uh, doesn't really have a good square. It's pretty important to guard f6. You don't want to allow something like bishop to h6 followed by this. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't move the knight, there's really no good way to develop the light square bishop. The rook is still undeveloped and this rook is really uh, funny looking on f8 or just waiting for this bishop to attack it. So here, if you try something, let's say knight b6 to start developing, uh, you, you lose the game immediately, bishop to h6. And not only do you lose the exchange here, the threat is of course queen captures on f8 with checkmate, but there is no square where you can move the rook to. Uh, <laughs> you can't develop the bishop, for example, if, if, if you develop the bishop, uh, 
you simply get queen to f6 and there's no defense against queen to g7 checkmate. So quite a terrible position for black. So after e4, uh, black tried nirvana, tried uh, knight to b6 to start developing. Uh, we have e5 now. Of course, you couldn't capture. Now white gets the opportunity and he expands in the center or she or it. Uh, but okay, bishop to f5, wooden attack on the queen. Uh, we have queen to d2 and now comes rook f to c8. Uh, a3, asking what do you want to do with this bishop. Bishop goes back to f8, which is a very a very natural approach. You don't want to allow any dark square weaknesses around your black king. So bishop to f8, a very nice move. Uh, knight to h4, attacking the light square bishop on f5, bishop to d3. And here we have the, well... A very important moment in the game. Uh, White's rook is under attack, and here Lila pushes f4. And it seems like a very natural move. Uh, in a in a classical game, you would most likely play this. Uh, in a blitz game, you would uh, definitely play it instantly, uh, because if you look at this position, uh, the this light square bishop on d3 black has is pretty much black's only active piece. Okay, bishop on f8 is very nice. I don't know if you would call this an active bishop. Uh, the queen on a5 not really doing all that much. <laughs> the knight on b6 likewise. Rook undeveloped, rook on c8. Uh, the bishop on d3 is pretty much black's only active piece. Uh, so f4, you don't mind... Uh, if this black's only active piece grabs your rook on f1 and you introduce your other rook into the game. Uh, bishop captures on f1 was played, we have rook captures on f1 and now comes knight to a4. Uh, oh, hoping to exchange on c3 and perhaps exchange queens, uh, but, but of course Lila did not sacrifice the exchange to, to, to go into an endgame. So f5, simply continue the attack on the king's side. Rook to c7. Uh, trying to introduce the other rook into the game as well, and also uh, adding further protection to f7. Uh, we have bishop to h6, offering uh, an exchange of dark square bishops, and of course you don't have the luxury to do this. After bishop captures, queen captures, uh, the threat of f6 and queen g7 is, is too powerful. If you try to prevent it with playing f6 yourself, you get simply f captures on g6, h captures, and now e captures on f6, and it's all over. For example, rook to f7, you try to stop the pawn, but then knight captures, you threaten checkmate on h8. If you stop this, then you get f7. You have to capture and uh, you will once again be checkmated on h8. Uh, so after bishop to h6, knight captures on c3 was played, and here we have uh, bishop captures on f8. Uh, you have to capture the bishop, you don't want to allow queen to h6, so rook captures, and now f6. A very nice move. Uh, if you tried something like uh, recapturing, b captures on c3, uh, is uh, far too slow because queen captures on a3 and black will defend. Uh, now if you play something like queen to h6, uh, black can simply move the rook and after you threaten checkmate, queen can come to f8. That was the whole reason of grabbing a pawn, not just to grab pawns. So black defended and now black is actually the one that's better here. Uh, so after rook, uh, rook captures on f8, we have f6 now. Uh, a very elegant way to continue the attack as the knight can't move, so the temporary peace sacrifice is, you know, not that important. Uh, king to h8. Uh, here we have knight to f3. Uh, knight to f3 is a very nice move because the immediate queen to h6, uh, black can defend with rook to g8. Uh, but it's very interesting, although this would not be possible <laughs> in this game, I will just uh, show it because uh, it's, it's one of my... One of my favorite uh, ideas, for example, if this was position, let's say rook f4, knight b5, let's say black threatens queen e1 for some reason, uh, knight f3, let's say something is played, let's say here, uh, how do you how do you win the game here with white? Uh, I, I only did this to present you with a nice puzzle, so feel free to pause the video here and find uh, a winning idea for white here. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent queen sacrificer. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, queen captures on h7, of course, is the idea. You might remember it uh, for your future games after king captures. Uh, uh, rook to h4 will be checkmate as the pawn is guarding <laughs> this square and the rook is preventing the king from escaping to g8. So a very nice idea. Regardless, it's not, you know, in any way connected to this game, but, uh, you know, just decide I, I decided to show it anyway. Uh, knight to f3 was played, a very nice move that uh, now after the queen comes to h6, the knight is coming to g5 and then the threats will also be uh, on g7 but both on h7 as well. Uh, knight to e2 check. You have to give up the knight uh, this way to at least uh, get the queen off of this diagonal. So now of course if you move the king, uh, black will be able to exchange queens. Of course you want to capture the knight but at least now the queen is not on this diagonal. 
Uh, we have h6 trying to consolidate with this uh, giving back of the piece idea. Uh, queen to f2, preparing queen to h4. We have c3, and then now comes queen to h4, with threats, of course, of queen captures and checkmate. Uh, so h5, uh, and now comes b captures on c3. Uh, you could... Uh, try and uh, ignore this by playing something like queen to g5 but after king to h7 yeah, there's no way for the queen to enter so uh, there's no rush first we captures we have queen captures on c3 and now comes queen to f4 uh, a much stronger idea than queen g5 because now after king to h7 which was played in the game at least you have this nice g5 square available for the knight uh, e6 first uh, now, again, we have a very nice position here where you can't really capture here because now we get knight g5 check and black is black is simply doomed. Uh, king moves, f7, you can't capture because the pawn is guarded three times. King moves, knight captures on e6 with the check. Uh, and here you're simply getting uh, <laughs> into, into a, a forced checkmate variation. King moves, you can bring a queen into the game or a knight. Uh, queen is somewhat faster and there's no defense against the... Against, uh, <laughs> any of the checkmates here uh, so okay uh, after e6 uh, we have rook to c8 and then now comes e7 of course you couldn't capture now but uh, white takes this opportunity uh, to push the pawn all the way to e7 uh, queen captures on a3 uh, there was no way to actually move the rook uh, so black uh, as black is uh, uh, up the exchange he tries to give back some material to at least try and get back into the game now comes g4 and here, you don't really have the option, again, of moving the rook. If you try to move the rook, you get the g captures on h5. Captures, and now comes queen to f5 check. King moves, queen captures, king moves, queen g4 check, and whatever you play with the king, you'll get queen to g g7 checkmate. So, uh, after g4, we get queen to d3, uh, and now comes knight to g5 with check. Uh, you have queen, king to g8, and now comes e captures on f8. Uh, it's a very nice, uh, <laughs> a very nice idea, uh, because Lila uh, goes for an under promotion here, capturing uh, uh, the rook and bringing a knight into ga the game, not bringing uh, a queen into the game. And someone already mentioned this. I believe it was during the game with uh, Engine Shiron. Uh, that uh, Lila uh, trolls uh, her opponents, but it's not. Uh, I've read somewhere that it's not uh, a matter of anything like that. That it's uh, merely a matter of uh, of conserving energy or something like that. Uh, I'm not that much into machine learning, but uh, it's basically like if you had uh, a king and three pawns versus a king and three pawns, and I have a queen and you have a rook. Uh, and if I know that the king and pawn endgame is winning, I'll just grab your rook with the queen because then uh, I, I, you know. I, I won't uh, tire my brain by calculating uh, <laughs> all your moves with the rook. So basically, by playing this, it doesn't matter what you bring into the game, the queen, the, the rook, the knight, or the bishop, uh, it's pretty much all the same. And here, Nirvana understands this and doesn't even bother recapturing, because if you recapture, again, g captures on h5 is sufficient to win, to win this. You move, you simply make a, a, a nice... Uh, <laughs> room on the g file for your rook uh bring a rook to, to the g file and here you would just win win the game easily or with any other variation uh but okay here a6 was played and now comes knight to d7 and here the game is completely winning for white it doesn't really matter what you play here you will still win the game uh so here rook to e8 was played we have uh, knight to d5 uh queen to c2 and now knight captures on f7 and here, uh, Nirvana just tried some silly moves to prolong the game. Uh, this is something engines will often do if they're not programmed to resign. Uh, queen f2 check, simply giving up the queen. Then comes rook to c8. Uh, queen threatens, checkmate on g7. And now, after rook c1 check, king moves and rook g1. King captures, h captures on g4 was played. And here on move 42, uh, Lila actually delivers checkmate against uh, engine Nirvana. So yeah, uh, there you have it, uh, a very nice game by Lila Chess Zero, I do hope you enjoyed it, even though uh, Lila is, I believe, some 200 rating points uh, higher rated than Nirvana, but, uh, you know, a very impressive game, uh, you know, even even in uh, human chess you will very rarely see uh, a game like this, even between opponents who are 200 rating points apart. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Alton Steely, Loftur Amundason, and uh, Alfredo Curry for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon uh, with another interesting video, perhaps even from Lila, but most likely continuing the, the Fisher series. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.